hospital, we were almost there to our, um, my school, and then, um, and then we crashed into a um, truck. Hours after a frightening bus crash in the woodlands, these two little girls relived those scary moments from their shared hospital bed. Seven-year-old Malia Gill Williams and her sister, four-year-old Liliana, were supposed to be in the safe hands of the children's courtyard, their daycare. You know, you never think that anything is going to happen, you know, to your child. You always, you, you have that, that think, but, you know, you take them there every day, you don't think that anything is going to happen. Look at what happened to their school bus. The front end caved in. Months later, those same little girls still suffer from the physical and emotional pain. It's my head. Yeah. You still sometimes get headaches. Mm -hmm. It was November 8th, an early Monday morning. I um, dropped the kids off. I believe it was around like maybe 7, 7.15 a.m. About a dozen kids between the ages of four and nine boarded that children's courtyard school bus, all headed to nearby Hauser Elementary. They would never get there that day. The bus headed down Woodlands Parkway. Two cars were stopped at a red light just minutes away from the daycare. The children's courtyard school bus literally rammed into the back of one of the cars. These are the crash records. They show the daycare bus driver, 22-year-old Cassandra Hutchins, actually accelerated in the final seconds before the collision. The impact sent the young kids flying. You can see that by looking at all the debris that swirled around inside the bus from the force of the crash. And then everybody started crying and then um, we had to sit down. Hutchins was clearly distracted by something, but she denies being on her cell phone as she drove this precious cargo. Phone records will ultimately uncover the truth. No, sir. My cell phone was in my purse. She also claims she had buckled up all the kids. I had everybody uh, seat belted. But look at what the state of Texas now says. Someone must be lying. An investigation by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services after the accident found seven violations by Children's Courtyard, not wearing seatbelts, not demonstrating good judgment, missing equipment in the vehicle. But the most damning evidence of all is four-year-old Caden Champagne. He was also on that school bus. He was flung forward, hitting the seat in front of him, breaking both of his legs. This is the this is the spot that Caden was sitting in, and it looks like he wasn't so good. Boom! He still has his stuff from there. Look right into that, and there's a bend right there. If Caden had been wearing a seatbelt, how could he have hit the seat in front of him? You know, I was like, dude, were you buckled? And he's like, no, Dad, and he's crying hysterical. No, Dad, I forgot. Were you wearing a seatbelt that day on the bus? No. Medical records show little Malia also hit the seat in front of her, smacking her right cheek and jaw. I mean, due to the Texas state law, they should have had a seatbelt on. Uh, majority of the kids did not have seatbelts. Children's Courtyard has a lot of explaining to do. Look what's posted right inside the bus, clearly. I mean, these things were meant to hold children. So there's no way they would fly if the heat they weren't. And if one wasn't buckled in, then they all weren't buckled in. Children's Courtyard seems to have a history of endangering kids. The state has found at least 600 violations across its locations in the last five years, a dozen serious injuries. The daycare is one of 10 separate companies underneath one umbrella, parent company Learning Care Group, and they've made headlines, and not in a good way. Check out the lawsuits, including serious motor vehicle accidents. Like this one that left Caden in a wheelchair for months, unable to walk or play with his friends. It was absolutely awful. It sucked. Um, it sucked even more so um, just seeing him like that. I mean, his little self-esteem is just was extinguished, extinguished, you know. Caden can play outside again, but it still hurts for him to jump. 
Yeah, he does. He walks different. Is yeah, it's a whole different. Uh, his knees are like turned inward. He still complains of uh, different it hurting at different times, uh, and even in his foot, he's been saying that the last couple of weeks that, that my right foot's hurting. Do your legs still hurt sometimes? Yeah. The really scary thing here is that we don't know the damages because when a child that age gets injured, you know, a child five or under, their growth can be impacted. It's also hard to measure emotional anguish. All three kids have it, as do their parents who've had to watch their little ones suffer. Imagine. Yeah, he refuses to, to ride a, um, a school bus at this time. So yeah, I bring him to school. He's a car rider. Before the accident, Liliana and Malia were like any girls their age. Now headaches and stomach aches prevent them from doing the little things they love. And both girls are also scared to ride buses again. Some of the times Liliana, she does not want to get on the bus. So I either have to walk her to the daycare bus or I have to take them to school. Cassandra is still employed at Children's Daycare. She claims she's not driving anymore, but she's still working with kids. That didn't sit well with me, and I felt like they were just basically throwing it under the rug. Both Sonora Gill and Tyler Champagne withdrew their kids from the daycare after the accident. But they say Children's Courtyard never even bothered to follow up with them after the accident. It hurt um, to know that we're literally right across the street from them and they still have not reached out. They knew my address, no flowers, no nothing, no we're sorry. Um, it was just like, you know, once I went ahead and I took the girls out, it was just like a relief from out of them. Children's Courtyard, they claim your child will be safe with them. They have an obligation to protect your kids and they completely failed. Yet you won't find the accident in the news. Lawyers for the children say if the crash had not happened just a few days after the tragedy at Astroworld. There would have been live media coverage and footage and everything of the accident, and that would have put a lot more pressure on Children's Courtyard. The daycare wouldn't have been able to brush it under the rug. Not anymore.